So for this part of the video series, we're covering setting realistic expectations. The reason this is the first one off the block is because this is one of the most major reasons why people fail while chasing their goals. There are three reasons that I've identified that make this a big problem. So the first one is when you don't have any social proof to lean on. The second one is when you feel so far away from the goal that you can't even reach it. And the third one is when you feel like it is actually not possible for you personally. So if any of those three things are going on, then you probably have an unrealistic expectation as to what you can achieve. And it's probably going to get in the way of your success. So for a goal to be reached, we really need to actually believe deep down that we can reach it. We also really need social proof, which is just that real world evidence that somebody out there who's just like you has achieved exactly what it is that you want to achieve. So we need a blueprint as such, some type of path that we can follow, which feels attainable for us personally. And then the other factor that can get in the way of your goals, as far as your expectations are concerned, is it can have some negative consequences as well. So there's a personal cost, like it can impact your friendships, it can impact your time with your children, it can impact your job and things like this. And it can also impact one of the most valuable assets of all time, which is your time. Okay, so if you think about it like that, <laughs> Who wants to chase after a goal that they're not really sure if they can achieve when it may also cost them all of those things at the same time? So if you really look at it, it kind of makes a lot of sense why you might have trouble sticking to your goals. So this probably seems confusing already and that is exactly why I am bringing this up because for goals to be achieved, they need to be really clear, they need to be really attainable, you have to know it can be done and there has to be not too much of a high cost for what you're willing to pay right now. And so let's go a little bit deeper, just in case we didn't go deep enough and look at why we might set unrealistic goals. So the first one is misinformation, my pet peeve. The second one is just that idea that something on the other end is going to be so much better than what we have right now. So the expectation of how things are going to look for you when you're finished and what I like to call magical thinking. So let's go through these one by one and just unpack them a little bit further. So misinformation is the biggest one. Okay, so there used to be a time like way back when maybe some of you were around in this time where you actually had to be a qualified professional in order to get a message out there. So generally a thought leader would be chosen by their peers. It'd be somebody in say the scientific community or an author or somebody who had a really crazy life journey that was validated by the population. And then they would then get thrust into the spotlight as an influencer as, as such but that would be determined by qualified individuals within a field of qualified professionals. Whereas now, fast forwarding to social media, you can just declare yourself an expert. So we have like 19 year old fitness people that say female health expert, you know, and they genuinely think they're an expert because if they Google a result comes up, you know, so they actually do, I've met these people, they do believe that they're experts and this causes a problem because Expertise takes many, many years to establish and achieve. And that's kind of all been, you know, thrown by the wayside. So on top of that, they can also control how you see them and they can actually control your perception of them. So a lot of people will look up to someone and like buy into their advice and they've never even met them before just because they look good or just because of how their branding or their marketing comes across on social media. So branding and marketing in a really great body does not equal success in terms of coaching and advice and it doesn't equal expertise. It means that that person is very good at building an online business and controlling your perception of them. You know, so as a consumer, you don't know what you're doing. You're just trying to achieve whatever it is you're trying to achieve. And that's the problem. So most often the information that you're going to cling to is the one that sounds the easiest. So that, this is just our human nature. Okay, so you're going to choose something that seems easy and simple over something that is truthful and sounding more intensive. So an unpopular truth, for example, you can't get most of the bodies on Instagram without steroids probably won't get as strong as you want to get. Cutting out carbs will actually damage you in the long run. And veganism is not the best way to put on muscle. You know, so a self-declared expert is somebody who had really great success with what they did. And then they created a profile and then they sold a program based on that. But that is not a real expert or a real professional or a real thought leader within a field. So somebody who is a real thought leader who won't share misinformation is somebody who is qualified, has to own up to some type of governing body. So they'll be registered to like a federation or a, you know, natural medicine association or a psychology association, something like that, where if they do malpractice or give out 
ridiculous advice, they can actually be sued and held liable for that. So if you are not qualified, you don't have to worry about that. So you can just say whatever it is that you want. So those of us who are qualified, we have to be very careful what we say because it has to be backed in science and it has to be so that if somebody took us to court, we need to be able to present the evidence behind what we did. So, you know, that kind of changes things as far as a professional versus a influencer who would be sharing misinformation. If you've seen that image, it's like a meme of unpopular truths versus comforting lies. I'll pop it up in the screen there, then you'll know exactly what I'm talking about here. You know, so this is another reason why something like the pharmaceutical company is so powerful because they offer you something that band-aids the symptoms without you having to do really anything to fix the symptoms. You know, reclaiming your health takes effort, but taking a pill is easy. So how do you set realistic expectations? You get educated. So more on that in the next point, but let's continue on here and unpack further why we have unrealistic expectations. So why do we fall for this stuff? Like deep down, we probably know that latest fad diet is probably not gonna work because the other 12 that we tried also didn't work. So why do we fall into that? So this is what I call magical thinking, which is a concept I actually learned while studying complex PTSD, which is a condition that I used to have when I was younger. And it's basically this coping strategy where you muster up something that sounds and feels really good, which helps you feel safer in the moment right now. So for example, if you thought, okay, in 12 weeks, I could have lost 20 kilos if I just do this shape diet, then that's magical thinking because you're hoping that physiology doesn't exist. You're hoping that you're gonna be one of those outliers. You're hoping that all of your problems are gonna be solved in 12 weeks. And you might also be hoping that at the end of those 12 weeks, something else is gonna happen. Like maybe your health problems are gonna have gone away. Maybe your boyfriend will be nicer to you or maybe something like that, you know? So we, we tend to do this as a coping strategy because life is hard and there's nothing wrong with that. You know, it's just that there are, there are more foundational ways to get there. You know, it just takes a little bit longer and a little bit of what you don't want to hear and a little bit more of the realistic expectations. You know, so we project into the future about what we think is going to make us happy. Something like a house, a brand new car, another baby, a marriage, like a wedding or something like that. You know, and we do that because life is hard and we think that if we get those things, then life is going to be easier and we're going to be happier. And the same applies for getting skinnier, for example. Okay? And life can get better, but being realistic is a massive part of that. Because by reaching our goals, we become stronger, we become more confident, we trust ourselves better, we're more self-assured, we're more willing to take measured risks because we know we've done it before and it paid off for last time. And we can literally conquer anything that comes up in front of us. So what's not to want about that, you know? So these are the kind of things that we're chasing when we chase a goal, whether realistic or unrealistic. The problem is if you're doing it the unrealistic way, you're not actually going to be able to collect up any of those benefits or any of those personal growth strategies because the unrealistic goal will not be achieved. So you'll just be disappointed over and over again. Okay, so when we chase an unrealistic goal, one that can't be achieved, we feel defeated, maybe embarrassed, maybe ashamed, unhappy, frustrated, angry. You know, we get all of those emotions that are really negative. We tend to then throw the goal in the one day pile and we say, no, I'm never gonna achieve that. This is not for me. Fall into a victim mentality until we find something else that our magical thinking decides is really great. And then we jump back onto that one and we just repeat this cycle over and over again. Okay, so by setting a realistic goal, you end the cycle. You just have to understand it's gonna be harder and it's gonna take you a little bit longer. So how do we set realistic goals? So this one's gonna sound a little bit cliche because it is something that you probably did in corporate if you're in there, or you might have learned it in some type of um, you know, strategy, in some type of like strategy program or something like that, but it is called a SMART goal. So it's how to set a goal that you can actually stick to. So the S being for specific, the M being for measurable, the A being for attainable, the R being for relevant, and the T being for time bound. So it needs to fit all of those criteria before you would even pursue the goal. So we know exactly what we want to achieve. We can measure our progress along the way. We know it's attainable for us personally because we've found somebody who's already achieved it. It is relevant to our lives and our future vision personally and it is bound to time. So there is a point of time in which we can make sure that we have achieved it. So it's pretty simple. Just run your goals through those pointers and don't set out to achieve it until it fits within every one of those categories. So that is how to set realistic goals. Let's move on to the next video.